Hello and welcome to the Extremist Publishing Podcast. I'm Tom Christie and it's a great pleasure to welcome back someone who will be familiar to you from a previous podcast and that is Mr Neil Hallam who is the creator of the Robin Hood 500 route and also the author of the official Robin Hood 500 guidebook. Now, Neil has had a fantastic and very interesting time since we last spoke to him. Um, he's travelled widely around the various different geographical locations of the Robin Hood 500 route. And uh, I'm absolutely delighted to invite him to say a little bit more about it um, and to talk about his future plans. So, Neil, thanks for joining us today. Hi, Tom. Thanks for having me back. And uh, hello, listeners. So, the Robin Hood 500 route... Um, obviously is you know entirely your own concept and it will take visitors through some of the most beautiful and you know historically significant parts of england um would you like to say a little bit more about uh, you know how the route has been developing and uh, you know the the kind of public interest you've had in it interest has been great I've, I've been out and about a fair bit uh, around the route and and slightly wider as well i think covered before it, it was a lockdown project where all the desk research uh, I, I did sat sat at my desk uh, for something to fill my time and uh, and something that really did catch my interest with the the history behind the legends uh, the, the the reason that they're so widespread the historians say that it's all to do with the traveling minstrels and storytellers as they moved about for different audiences they drew in bits of local color to make their performance relevant to the audience so as they moved about all these characters that had got some of the characteristics of robin hood were pulled in and in the book i cover five or six real people but they lived over a period of about 120 years so what we now see as robin hood is really a bit of a composite of of lots and lots of people who lived this slightly outlaw lifestyle uh, and the stealing from the rich giving to the poor concepts always been quite a popular idea so, so that was my lockdown, doing the research and finding the places. And then as soon as we were set free, I was able to go out and, uh, and explore them. And I, I did the route and made sure it all worked. And it was a nice experience driving around it, avoiding as many of the busy play, roads and places as I could. And then we got the book out. And, and since then, I've been taking it further. I've been I've been revisiting a lot of the places uh, and there's a there's a website that's a companion to the book um, www.500rh.co.uk uh, and through that you can join up to a, a membership scheme where there's more detailed itineraries and that's where I'm putting a lot of the information of the places that to, uh, I'm revisiting, as well as on social media. There's a Facebook and there's an Instagram uh, page for for the uh, the route. But these revisits have enabled me to do a bit more of a deep dive, uh, and put some walks and cycle routes in that you can explore a bit more depth. Uh, a real nice one recently that I did was uh, in the the Peak District town of Hathersage in Derbyshire. Uh, and that's reputed to be the hometown of Little John. Uh, he's, he's, his grave is in the, uh, the parish church uh, that sits above the village. Uh, there's a gravestone there. And the stories that I talk about in the book of uh, unearthing a thigh bone that uh, when they did the, uh, sort of the anatomical work from it, they would have stood a shade over seven foot tall, so hence fits with the uh, the, the little John character being exceedingly tall. Uh, and then in the hills overlooking uh, have the sage on Stanage Edge, which uh, I knew very well as a rock climber in my younger days. There's uh, Robin Hood's cave, which is a little bit hidden. You have to do a bit of a a, a, a climb slash scramble to get to it because it's tucked away under the under the ledge but that's reputed to be a place where where robin and his gang hid from the sheriff when they were hunting for them 
in the Peak District. So that features in the walking itinerary uh, on the website as a as a lovely little walk, starting at Stanage Edge, dropping downhill uh, through um, through the farms and wooded valleys into Hathersage, visit Little John's grave, uh, and then I've managed to find a easier way to do the climb back up that sort of contours round the outside of the hills rather than attacking them straight on so that you can go back up and uh, visit Robin Hood's cave and the hiding place so there's there's lots of things like that I've been doing um, I mean another walk in the same area slightly further south but still in the Peak District uh, of Robin Hood's stride it's a it's a very dramatic uh, rock outcrop but uh, the, the way that uh, either the weather or earth movements affected it there's a big cleft down the middle and a bit of a, a test of manhood for uh, for the, uh, the the old tribes that lived in the area to jump from one pinnacle to the other which I know that story is very prevalent up in Scotland where you are with the, the coming of age for the uh, the, the the young men of the clans but it's uh, it found its way down into the peak district as well and one of the many people that have made this uh, this big leap is, is uh, reputed to be robin hood but there's a there's a lovely walk uh, around there that i've that i've put in the book uh it's not all about walking you know i've, I've been out and, uh, and visited some of the uh, the culture and heritage uh, earlier in the year, I joined Derbyshire and Peak District uh, Tourist Authority, and that's given me some great links. Um, in only uh, only last week, we got a uh, uh, experience day at, uh, at Haddon Hall. That's um, it, it, it fits between uh, sort of Matlock, that's that's one of the more famous Peak District towns, and uh, and Hathersage that we've just talked about on the A6, as it uh, which is forms part of the Robin Hood 500. Um, Haddon Hall has been in so many TV programmes and films because the family closed it up for about 200 years and moved the sort of the family seat for the. Uh, the the dukedom down into uh, Beaver on the uh, the Nottinghamshire Leicester border. Uh, when they finally opened it up about uh, seventy years ago, it was this time capsule that all the furnishings and decor and things were as they were two hundred years prior. So, just going around the hall itself is uh, an interesting experience. But what fits quite nicely with uh, with the theme of the Rob Robin Hood 500 and the whole getting to grips with the Robin Hood experience is their medieval deer park. Again, that's been left pretty much to its own devices for 200 years from when it was uh, it was used by the uh, the lords of the manor for deer hunting. And Robin Hood and his ilk would have gone out to uh, poach the king's deer on the land. And they're, they're in the midst of a, uh, a process working with Natural England and some of the other conservation uh, groups to uh, to restore this whole medieval deer park to its former glory. And you can do guided walks around them and see pretty much what Robin, Little John, Marion and the gang would have been seeing back in medieval days. Uh, so that's uh, that, that's a, a nice little bit of heritage that uh, that that I've been doing. Um, other things back into the more modern world. One of the uh, the key customer groups that I designed the Robin Hood 500 for a, a camper vans and motorhomes although it's it's suitable for motorbikes as well because I ride motorbikes or you could do it in your car but settling on the the, the camper vans and motorhomes I've done two of the big uh, camper van shows uh, so far this season and uh, there was something in excess of 7,000 camper vanners that came over the three days uh, last month when I was at uh, uh, the Midland Showground in uh, in Newark. Uh, and that was a, a great opportunity to talk to the people that were actually going to go out 
for it. Now that brings me around to one of the, how do we use this guidebook? The question that I got asked most often was, do you suggest campsites to stay on in the book? And I don't, and there's a reason for it. Um, the ownership of the campsites change regularly, just as the, the ownership of hotels and B&Bs and other accommodation do. And I want the hard copy guidebook to stand the test of time and you'd be able to pick up the copy you've bought in five years time and go out and enjoy the route again. And if I've put time sensitive things like the campsites in, then it, it loses some of that longevity. But what, a bit, what I was recommending to the people that asked me that question is this, there's so many websites and apps and things for, for, for the campsites and indoor accommodation now, that the way I've structured the guidebook, it's very detailed for all the towns and villages that the road and the roads that the route passes through the various areas. So rather than start with, oh, I like the sound of that campsite, start with, I like the sound of that attraction whether it be Little John's Grave up in Hathersidge, um, Haddon Hall, if you want some, some history and culture, or further north up on the North York Moors where uh, where Robin was practising his archery at Robin Hood's Butts overlooking uh, Whitby and Robin Hood's Bay. So that's your starting point. Find out where you want to spend a day or two and then use one of these many apps to find out do you want a, a big family friendly campsite with lots of amenities and a and a on-site bar and park for the children do you want a, a 12 to 15 pound club site with very few amenities or do you want one of these pub stays where the uh, the pubs allow you to stay in the car park if you buy a meal and a pint or two in in the bar so that sort of variety i couldn't hope to uh, achieve within the pages of the guidebook but by giving you the detail of where the attractions are and how the route moves about them it gives you the flexibility to do current research for where to go one of the things I love about the Robin Hood 500 route is the fact that it covers so many different areas of cultural significance um, because Robin Hood obviously is one of the most historically uh, porous characters uh, right up there with King Arthur um, and you cover all of the very diverse and different myths and legends regarding Robin. You talk about the uh, the historical context of, of this particular figure and the many different interpretations um, of, of Rob, the Robin Hood legend. Um, but you also talk about the, the many different characters that um, that we've come to associate with Robin Hood, be it Maid Marian, the Sheriff of Nottingham, Friar Tuck, Little John, Alan Adele, um, Will Scarlet, you talk about all of those different uh, locations um, and the different um, areas of significance uh, to these characters. Have you found that there are any particular attractions um, that have really um, garnered the attention of, uh, of people who've been travelling the route? Um, you know, are there any particular favourites that stand out? Probably easiest to start with a bit of a where they haven't actually <laughs> and move from that. Um, I was approached recently by a researcher for uh, for ITV television. They're, they're looking at doing a piece for why the city of Nottingham hasn't grasped Robin Hood in quite the way that they might have done for tourism. Um, you can visit the castle uh, and Nottingham Castle's got a, a fantastic audio visual um, section in the in the the uh, the caverns underneath Castle Mount, uh, but it's very orientated towards children. And I took two of my granddaughters there uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and there's they can they can watch audio vi audio and visual descriptions of people talking through some of the ballads, and they can dress up in period costume, uh, and there's even fantastic 
like uh, virtual reality stuff for for shooting a bow and arrow uh, and the one i really liked was having a quarter staff fight with little john uh, that you 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 hold a a, a staff that's that's wired to the uh, the the screen in front of you and and basically where where you point the staff is where you hit and you get to know whether you've beaten little john or not um but that that's really the only part of nottingham that that grabs robin hood shooting much further north to hit another of the characters uh you mentioned friar tuck um fountains abbey i thoroughly enjoyed the visit there it's a national trust property so there is an admission fee or it's it's in with your national trust membership if you um if you've got it but that fits to the story of uh, of robin hood and friar tuck carrying each other across the river uh, and then tipping each other into the water and the interpretations of the medieval ballads put that as the river skell that flows through fountains abbey uh, it's a ruined abbey but there's a lot of the ruins still there but it's it's a beautiful park for for a walk around there's um there's victorian managed gardens beyond it where it was turned into more of a stately home there's robin hood's well that's a, a historic spring that's clearly been there for, for a long long time but the victorians have put a well head on the wood above the uh, the spring is robin hood's wood um and it it's got a range of of walk to suit all abilities in um and they'll tell you bits of the stories the the robin hood well thing seems to they got the name for that as the the steam trains started moving people around in the victorian age and tourism became more of a thing fountains abbey latched onto that and they ran uh, buses from the uh, the nearest train station to bring visitors into the park and the cafes and and to hire the tour guides to lead you round and they even hid an old english longbow in the undergrowth behind the well that uh, suddenly got produced as oh and i found robin hood's bow yeah very very unlikely it's the real one because i think the wood would have uh, rotted away uh, by the, if it had been lying there till victorian times but what i've what i've always said about robin hood and the robin hood 500 is although there's elements of it that are crouched in truth and the locations we visit are very real and very visit worthy the stories are legends that have been embellished over time and there's nothing wrong in that you know they're a good entertaining story that just add a bit of an interest to your visit so one of the really interesting things about the route of course is not just the way that you've been popularizing all of these amazing places but also the fact that you yourself have been present giving presentations and you know having in-person appearances um what kind of experiences have you had so far well, that's been something that uh, it came as a bit of an extension from a lot of some of the um, the arts and crafts fairs and book fairs that I've been going around. I've been very busy over the last year uh, with those promoting the book and and some of my other work. Uh, but I gradually started getting asked, "Do you do talks?" And it wasn't something that I'd really considered. But I'm a confident speaker. I've done a little bit of university lecturing and my police background gives me the confidence to talk to people so it was a yeah why not uh and so i've I've started doing those the two groups so far that have engaged me have been uh, the, the women's institute and uh and u3a university of the third age which is a they describe it as a, a lifelong learning organization for retired people and uh, I've got two versions of the talk. One's very much based around the Robin Hood 500 and uh, talking about the legends in context with the group. But the one I get asked for most regularly sows my police experience into it. So I've, I've structured the 10 books that I've written, some of which are a crime fiction, some of which are, are historical works. 
and some of my guide books and then there's the 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 robin hood 500 which is a bit of a hybrid which is a guide book that deals with a lot of historical research that that digs on my police experience as a detective for for ferreting all this information out and uh, i essentially work through my catalog of books by putting the cover of a book up and talk about where the fact meets the fiction so where I've dealt with things either in my policing or in my in my outdoor life because I've I, I've I've traveled the world as an adventurer I mean, I've, I've climbed in the Himalayas I'm, I I rode across the Mongolian steppe on a mountain bike um, I've, I've I've traveled in most parts of the world now and that's that's kind of the the experience and the skills that I brought to developing the Robin Hood 500. So those, those talks, that's the way that I've structured the talk, that I, I, I weave a bit of a wavy line through my life and career in the context of having created all these uh, books over the years. And where do you think the Robin Hood 500 is going to take you next? Uh, do you have any plans in mind for particular events or are you happy to see where circumstance takes you? I've got some some books. There's a couple more motorhome shows uh, arranged for next year, not uh, not this one. And actually, they, they're going to get me on the uh, on the speaker uh, schedule. Uh, the last two that I've done, I've just been there as a, a trader with the, uh, the the Robin Hood 500 branded. Uh, bright green gazebo that's uh, that's something to look out for uh, but they they have a range of talks the ones at Newark were um, the re, uh, a, a young couple with young children talking about motorhoming with kids uh, there was uh, another couple who, who seemed to specialize on the Scotland's North Coast 500 and they were talking about their experiences up there and there were other more practical talks about the, the practicalities of equipping and living in a motorhome, uh, but they uh, they want me on next year's schedule at a couple of the shows talking about the Robin Hood 500 and how to get the best out of it. Um, and then of course there's the the Christmas markets, um, mostly down this direction, Nottinghamshire, Derbyshire, because it's easier for me to travel to in the in the bad weather, but. Uh, I've got I've got five dates through November and December at, uh, at Cromford Mills, which they sit on the uh, the route, but the but the history there is less Robin Hood related. But it's um, Arkwright, who was uh, talked of as being the father of the factory system, he, his early developments in water powered cotton mills. Um, has been exported the world over that's brought uh, uh, manufacturing out of people's back rooms into into these large factories so i'm i'm in there in this restored heritage stone mill for 5 days i've got a full week at haddon hall for their uh, artists and mercatum christmas market and then there's the regular ones at, at Bakewell, which is very near Hathersage for Little John's home. I'm I'm there the uh, last Saturday of every month for the farmers market uh, with with my stall, and I've got quite a few regular customers who uh, who, who keep returning for another book uh, when they've read the last one. And from there, I'm I'm open to suggestions. So if if the listeners have got uh, have, have got an event that uh, they think the uh, the Robin Hood 500 stall or me as a uh, a speaker would uh, be a nice fit. I'm uh, I'm always open to suggestions. Well, on that very note, um, it's really important to mention that the 500 RH is more than just a route and a guidebook. Um, you also have a, a comprehensive range of merchandise tied into the brand. Um, would you like to say a little bit more about that and also how people can get hold of it? Yeah, well, it's all all through the website, uh, 3w's500rh.co.uk, um, and there's a uh, there's a, a a green woolly hat with the 500rh logo, so you can uh, you, you can imagine yourself as Robin Hood with your Lincoln green hat and uh, celebrate the fact that you've been out on the route. Uh, there's so on patches. 
there there are stickers for either inside the windscreen of your vehicle or uh, or on the outside if you want to decorate the outside of your camper van uh, there's a nice aluminium water bottle in uh, in in the same Lincoln green with the 500 RH logo on uh, and then as things progress we'll no doubt uh, expand the range but there's there's other companion books as well uh, I've got the um, there's a cycling guide in Nottinghamshire, which is actually the project that led me to create uh, the Robin Hood 500, uh, the Robin Hood Cycleway. The, the Robin Hood Way is a, a 90 mile long distance footpath linking Robin Hood locations in Nottinghamshire. But because it was created by a rambling club, there's lots of it that you're not allowed to cycle on. So. I've de I developed that as a, uh, a cycling alternative where I found bridleways or quiet roads to bypass the uh, the footpath only sections uh, and the uh, the walks that I talked about. I'm in the process of uh, of compiling those into a walking companion to uh, to go alongside the uh, the half dozen or so walks that are already in the Robin Hood 500 guidebook. And then completely off the subject of Robin Hood, but related to the police uh, experience, I'll, I'll give the uh, I'll give the Christmas uh, launch a, a plug. The wife came up with a concept of a children's book about Bobby the police cat a few years ago, and we uh, we backburnered it because we'd got no one to illustrate, but. Uh, my uh, my granddaughter went off to college doing uh, doing art, and uh, we're talking to her. And, yeah, I can do that, Granddad. So uh, we're in the process of, uh, of of a children's book about a uh, a cat who goes out doing police work. It's fantastic news. Well, thank you so much, Neil, for having joined us today and telling us a little bit more about what's been happening on the five hundred RH route. Um, I really do hope that everyone who's listening at home will um, want to find out more about it, um, will want to meet you at forthcoming events, um, and indeed to follow what's happening uh, on the route in the months to come. So why not follow Neil at Neil Hallam's 500RH on Facebook, or by joining his website at www.500rh.co.uk. And you can find out more about membership benefits when you're on there. So thank you so much, Neil, for having joined us today. It's been great to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you for having me and uh, thank you for listening. So thanks, everyone, for having joined us today. I hope that you'll tune in again soon.